it was a great, great time. And um, we did a lot of hiking <coughs> and other things, a lot of hiking and things that we thought, you know, you have a pretty narrow window between retirement and infirmity. And we just <laughs> thought we better go. So that's a pleasant we, thought. I know we hiked in the Alps and we ate a lot of pasta and my husband did a serious study of tiramisu and it was fun. Practiced our high school German, our French, our Italian. It was all good. Well, that's great, Mariah. Well, we missed you. I'm glad you're back. Yeah. Now I, now, now I have a saying to put over my computer. I can look at it. There's a narrow window between retirement and infirmity. I'll have to remember that. Okay. <laughs> All right, so Mark Labhart is here, uh, fortunately, due to some unforeseen weather, it sounds like. Yeah, well, I, I kind of agree with Moret. I, I call it a gap between retirement and the walker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, we uh, last week we just got back from a trip to Iceland, London, and then uh, Brussels and Bruges. Uh, for two weeks. So yeah, I had a great time, got to see the Northern Lights, and then I was going to go hunting up in the Eagle Caps, and uh, that got sidelined. There's about uh, two feet of snow in our place where we camp, and we could not get in there. So I'm back home. <laughs> oh, but it was a nice trip in the snow. I am glad to see lots of snow in the mountains, though. Yeah, we've got snow here, which was nice to see. It's a nice change. So Charlotte, you were also traveling. I was, yeah. So I just got back from a two week trip to New York, first time in two years and got to bring my son home to visit everyone, which was great. And I have to say, I did think of you, Carl. I spent a couple of days up in the Adirondacks and got to tour all the beaver dams and all of that type of stuff <laughs> on our property. We own about 70 acres up there. So my dad was very excited to show me all the work of the beavers, so. Oh, that's great. Well, thanks for <laughs> telling me about that. Mauricio, what have you been up to? Uh, well, I am calling today from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Oh, no and I wish I would have <laughs> And I wish I would have known that Moret and uh, Commissioner Lapard were here, but I would have just scheduled some sort of uh, get together in the middle of it all. We spent, uh, this is tomorrow we go back to Portland. We spent about six weeks also here in uh, uh, exploring the Netherlands and uh, the south e southeastern part of Spain. So Valencia, Alicante, and a whole bunch of like amazing places all around that. So yeah, super excited. Also lots of like great ideas about how we can engage folks in conservation, which I'm hoping we can, I can share over a nice glass of wine when we meet here at the end of this month. Oh man, Mauricio, man, thank you so much for the efforts you made to connect with us from Amsterdam. I think you're making all this up. You're really just in a little room next to your house, but Amsterdam, South America, pretty impressive. Amsterdam, just just a little bit of aggression in, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's great. I'm, I'm glad you're, glad you're able to join us. Hey, Kalen, so what have you been doing? Not traveling Western Europe, just the Western United States. Uh, we had our statewide outdoor recreation summit not quite two weeks ago uh, over in Welches with about 300 folks and uh, great keynote speakers. Obviously, the content is important, but the reminder really for me and I think for everyone is just how good the energy is when folks are together and that the people we get to work with on the day to day uh, are part of what makes working in the conservation and outdoor recreation space really special. People really care. And so it was, it was amazing to hear about the work going on all around our state. And uh, for that conference to be together for the first time since 2019. And then shortly thereafter, uh, like the very next day, drove down to Reno and Tahoe for uh, a similar national outdoor recreation conference where uh, my day was, or my, my stay was about a, a day longer than expected because it went from 80 and sunny to full on winter and got to check in with a, a cousin down there. Um, and then, you know, beyond conference season, I am really excited to see some new 
figures come out for kind of the state of the outdoor recreation economy, those will be released at 6 a.m. Wednesday morning, which is a terrible time to release economic figures or anything if you want people to pay attention to them. Um, but I expect we'll see a nice sort of economic rebound um, capturing spending and folks getting outside in 2021. So part of my week will be helping spread the spread the word and interpret those data. So, and yeah, really excited to be together with all of you in person because that energy is just totally different when you're in the same same room, even if you're indoors talking about the outdoors. It's much, much better than on Zoom. So, okay, thanks. Then. I agree with you, Kaylin. I just I got back just got back from the Oregon Association of Conservation Districts meeting, where I gave a presentation on the OCRF, and it's like, oh my God, this is so great! You know, we we had a great reception and got to talk to people that I've seen on Zoom but never met. So I hope all of y'all are are getting excited about our in person meeting and really take it seriously and show up. I think it's going to be great. So. Mark Stern, what's up with you? Yeah, hi everyone, nice to see everybody. Uh, we spent a bit of time the first half of October, uh, we've been involved in these uh, annual Sandhill Crane Counts on Sobe Island Wildlife Area and Ridgefield Refuge and the uh, coordinated count we had, uh, well over 5,000 Canadian Sandhill Cranes there, which was uh, one of the highest counts we've had over the last 25 plus years. So that was kind of fun. And while doing that, of course, you get to see uh, all the other waterfowl and water birds that come through there. So it's really nice to be out there. It's a, it's a great spot. I know, Jane, you live on the island and it's a great place to be this time of year. Well, thanks, Mark. I, I'll give you a, a little bit of a counterpoint to that. The Thule Lake and Lower Klamath Refuges in the Klamath Basin are bone dry. And there's about a thousand sandhill cranes forlornly standing out in these dry lake beds. It's like, oh my gosh. So maybe they'll be coming back to uh, coming back to Savi Island for a little bit of water. I bet they'll be scooting down south to Gray Lodge in the Sac Valley pretty quick. Would be yeah, like they're not they're not hanging out. So Jane, what else is going on on Savi Island? You still mute. Jane, you're still mute. You're still mute, Jane. We can't hear you. There you go. Okay. My computer, my computer picked today to tell me that I needed to upgrade Zoom or I couldn't join this meeting. So if you've seen me moving around. I'm uh, doing it from my phone until I can figure out, uh, yeah. I need to put a password in and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, yeah, the best thing happening around here right now is the Santa Cruz and they are flying right over my house really low and hanging out in the fields. Mark, if you ever need to count them at this time of year, they're usually down here. So um, you can count them from our backyard. Anyway, other than that, not much has been going on. Well, that's pretty exciting. That's great. Sristi, how about you? Hey, Carl. Hi, everyone. Um, let's see. Well, I got back from Belize a few weeks ago. That was amazing. Um, got to snorkel the Belize Barrier Reef, saw sharks, barracudas, stingrays, manta rays. It was, it was just unreal. It was beautiful. I also managed to miss a hurricane by half a day. So I'm grateful for that. Uh, so, but otherwise it was stunning. The forests are beautiful. Wildlife is stunning out there, of course. Um, and then I've been back, I've been traveling a little bit within the US. I went to Santa Fe for uh, a work trip. Um, and speaking of work, I started at Western Environmental Law Center last week. So this is my week two on the new job and I'm drinking out of the fire hose, but it has been amazing. <laughs> Oh, great. Well, we all hope that works out well for you. That's, that's a big change, but it's great for you. Absolutely. Um, Kelly. Hey, guys. Good to see everybody today. I uh, am enjoying my husband's company again now that he's done deer hunting <laughs> unsuccessfully, unfortunately, but he's been gone a lot, you know, during deer season. It's hitting all the mornings and nights and weekends and 
and all that. But he thoroughly enjoyed his hunts this year. He had lots of wildlife encounters um, and some good deer encounters too, just none successfully. Um, other than that, been doing a lot of chanterelle hunting with the girls and oh. the ocean is also just huge lately. We're, you're, we're coming up on our king tide season. Um, so it gets really great, but we had a big beach bonfire on Saturday and it was just roaring. We've been having thunderstorms, which is rare over here. Lots of rain and even a little dusting of snow this morning as well um, on parts of the coast. So it's cold. Oh, that's great. I thought of you, Kelly, because that uh, conservation district meeting was in Newport. Yeah. So, so my wife and I got to hang out in Newport and we went hiking on some old growth trails. And man, it is so different over there from it where is. we live. We're so lucky to live in a state with such incredibly diverse stuff, man. It was like a different world. Yeah. Uh, so I see that we have Liza Jane McAllister, who's just joined us. Uh, this is a good time to uh, to introduce you to everyone. What we do typically, Liza Jane, is go around and hear what everybody's been up to since the last meeting. But uh, we went ahead and moved forward with that. So I, I'll take this opportunity to welcome you and and tell you how glad we are that you're on the committee and look forward to working with you and was wondering if you wanted to give us an update on who you are and what you're interested in and and a little bit about yourself well good afternoon i apologize i was playing with technology there so um took me a minute to get here but um I'd like to say hello to everybody. I'm really looking forward to working with you, learning, I'm trying to help uh, with the, I've, uh, Charlotte gave me a whole list of things to read. And what I mostly gathered with, from that was how much work you've already done. It's really incredible in a short amount of time and um, good, good work. Uh, for myself, I live in uh, Enterprise in Wallow County in the end of the road in Northeast Oregon. Um, I own a ranch here, the Six Ranch. It's been in my family since 1884, and it's a family operation. Um, and my work in habitat restoration, we have uh, uh, the Wallowa River runs through the middle of the ranch. It was channeled. And so about 20 years ago, we got started in um, restoring that stretch. And I think that was beyond just regular ranch uh, habitat, caring for the land. That was my first step into big stuff of really making a difference. And in that first project, within 30 days, we had Chinook coming through, which we've never, we haven't seen in 30 years. So. Um, it was really exciting. I did a little bit of land finagling and I got another mile of river um, and we did another project there. So uh, it, it kind of created a door for me away from livestock into fish. And, um, and so I was uh, invited into the Columbia Basin Task Force and worked with them for, for NOAA for four years. And then maybe from that, I, I was invited to join OWEB about five years ago. Um, I serve as their co-chair now for the third or fourth year. And so I got to, got to know Mark um, and he led me to you. And, um, and so I'm, I'm hoping that I also have a background in grant writing and grant reviewing and have a hopefully an understanding of fundraising and how to go through those systems. So although I can see that I will be drinking from the fire hose as well, um, I'm really looking, looking forward to this and um, being able to work with such an outstanding group of people. So uh, that's, that's all I can think of right now. I'm a fly fishing guide on the river, uh, manage this property as, as conservation, recreation and agriculture. Um, all together, I feel strongly that that can happen. I hunt, I got my uh, cow this year and a buck on the ranch. So i um, enjoying all that good meat um, and love to be outdoors, so. Well, Liza Jane, thank you for 
for joining us and for uh, being willing to serve on this committee. I think you'll bring some great insight to us, and, and I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts on things. We got a lot going on. Are you going to be able to make it to the in-person meeting? I absolutely will do my best. It's all about the weather. Yeah. So I'm, yeah, I'm planning to come. Right. Well, yeah. we hope you can make that. That'll be a great way to get to know everybody. And uh, and I, I'm actually heading your way next week. I'm going to Troy to do some steelhead fishing. But here the weather's going to be pretty crummy. <laughs> yeah it'll be cold i worked with the uh, broodstock collection down there that odf and w did and camped and it was beautiful um i didn't help them a whole lot but we i think we got 15 as a group and it was a really neat project so um right. you're welcome to swing by and say hello if you come by the highway runs right through the middle of the ranch so i may just do that that would be wonderful yeah so uh Okay, well that's great. Well, I do. I have I have something to give everybody update because it's relevant to low CRF. I had a fantastic experience last week. I got a call from uh, ODF and W fisheries biologist um, Mark Hereford, and he invited me to join him to release 400 Chinook salmon into the Williamson River, Sprague River, Wood River, and Crooked Creek which are all above the dams. It's the first time Chinook salmon have swam in the Sprague River in 90 years. And we and the other ones, they put some in, out in the spring. That's relevant to us because we funded that program, if you all recall. Uh, and they have raised these salmon in the hatchery. They're from the Trinity River, which is one of the tributaries of the Klamath and have tagged them and they're following what they do and it's just amazing they let about 2000 go this spring and they had hoped that they would move through the lake which is thought to be quite a barrier and end up in the river and a whole bunch of them did exactly that they made it all the way through the lake and and one fish managed to make it to the ocean that fish went through four turbines. Mm -hmm. There's no fish ladders. There's no passage over these dams. The only way to get through them is to go through a turbine. <laughs> it had a pit tag, and they picked that pit tag up at the mouth of the river. So that just tells you what salmon are capable of. Was it just the tag, or was there a fish with it? <laughs> well, you wonder if there's a fish. It could have been in another fish, but the tag made it. <laughs> And they did pick up tags all up and down the river. So um, pretty positive outcome. They did not expect any fish to get down past the dams. So, so anyway, that was big news. And, and, and you guys helped fund that program. And uh, it was quite exciting to let those fish go and see them swim off into the water. It was really cool. OK, well, great. Carl, we, did we hear from Tristy? Uh, yeah, we did. Okay, I, must, yeah, I must have been off. And she was in Belize and doing all kinds of great <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Sorry, I was probably trying to, I, I think I was trying to email Liza Jane during that process. <laughs> I hope I didn't forget. I think I got everybody. All right, well, great. Well, with that, now that we know what everybody's been up to, and boy, isn't it great to be out of the pandemic and everyone's traveling all over the place and doing... And because of that, we have this incredible technology that allows Mauricio to join us from Amsterdam. I mean, that's just really incredible. Just think about where we are today. And it's part of the reason we were, Liza Jane, we did get a lot done. But a lot of it was because we had this tool uh, that, that we used from, we decided right at the outset that we were going to meet. And we did it through Zoom. And People got to be very efficient with it. With that being said, we're all excited about meeting in person. I think it'll be a compliment to what we've been able to do already. Okay, with that, um, Charlotte, we got. Uh, let's do the minutes, or or do you have to?
Do you have to recognize the public here? Or? No, I will have to recognize the public first, and I will be reading out five names of the public. Um, apologies if I mispronounce your name. We have James Frazier, we have Tyler Dugan, we have Josh Hansen, Matt Taylor, and Kay Brown with us today. And it looks like a couple of you are jumping in and out, so those are the names that I have seen at this time. Um, the next on our agenda is to review and approve the meeting minutes from the October 3rd meeting. Those minutes were emailed to you this morning, and I would be happy to put up a motion if you would like me to, Carl. Sure, that'd be great. If you could put that up and someone willing to make that motion. I'd be glad to make the motion. We'll make it. I move to approve the October 3rd, 2022 meeting minutes with the continued authority to correct spelling, grammar, and punctuation. I want, seconds. I, want, I want Mauricio to second it from Amsterdam. <gasps> okay, go for it, Mauricio. I second. All right. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so we got our minutes approved. Great. Uh, if I may, um, we do need to do an all in favor, just so I have that firmly oh, documented. Sorry. All in favor. I'm right. skipping that point. Perfect. Thank, Thank thanks you. for keeping me in line, Charlotte, as usual. All so, right, great. So uh, next up is staff and chair updates. Um, I do have an update on our most recent Trout Creek Ranch special project, but I would also maybe like to invite you, Carl, as the chair, if you had any other updates from the presentation that you just provided last week. Um, so the Oregon Conservation, Oregon Association of Conservation Districts met in Newport and asked us to presentation of uh, on the OCRF as part of a panel um, that included funders, uh, basically all the funders for projects. And, and let's let me just say it was a little bit intimidating after seeing all of the zeros that were after the numbers that these other funders were, they had available like NRCS and uh, OWEB. It's like, okay, well, we're, we're up there, but we are a, a, a small player in the big scheme of the numbers that are out there. However, it was clear from the feedback I got that we're very valued in that we definitely fill and ni several niches that are not covered by some of these other programs. So I think the presentation was well received and people uh, were enthusiastic about OCRF. And uh, I finished off by making sure they knew about the checkbox on the hunting and fishing license site. <laughs> so hopefully we'll get some funding that way, but it was good. It was a, it was a very good meeting. Great, thank you. Um, so just a quick update on our most recent special project, the Trout Creek Ranch. That went um, in front of the ODFW Commission on um, October 14th, feels like a lifetime ago, but it was very well received. Um, we provided roughly about a 15 minute presentation and we had a unanimous consent for the project, which is great. So we've already moved forward with the contracting on that. Um, I am working with the Oregon Department of Justice to finalize that contract. And it should be to the Oregon Desert Land Trust, uh, hopefully by the end of this week for their signature. And I'm actively working with the donor to make sure that we have all those funds in hand. And that, cross our fingers, will be finalized by the time you guys get to meet in person. Um, I might ask Commissioner Lavhart, is there anything you would like to add to that since um, you were obviously present at the presentation? Nope, as usual, OCRF did, did their homework. And um, so that, that's great when a commission can see all the T's crossed and I's dotted. So yeah, it was uh, well received. Great. Uh, are there any other questions about that special project? I just have a comment about Charlotte. Um, she uh, is the right person at the right time as we were gunslinging our way through the early years of the OCRF, kind of shooting at whatever came by. 
Charlotte has got us in line and has really, I, what she did with this particular project, this could have gone sideways on many levels just because we're dealing with big numbers and that changes things and there's a regulatory things and funding things and state rules and Charlotte navigated that whole course, did an incredible job of pulling that all together. And so when we, like, as, as Mark pointed out, when we take it to the commission, it's in a nice package. Looks like we knew what we were doing the whole time when really we didn't. So thank you for that, Charlotte. Um, I, that, I, that project means a lot to me and uh, I'm really happy that we were able to see that to the finish line. Great. Well, thank you for that. It was definitely, it is a learning experience for us and the department. Uh, we crossed a lot of new ground with that project, but I think it actually, um, I'm very excited to see it done and off of my desk. And hopefully uh, Brent will be very excited when his check is all set and in the mail. So it will be a good thing all around. Um, I think with that, uh, I might pause, see if anyone else has any other updates, and then I'd love to kind of move into some logistics for in-person meeting. I do have one more relevant update. Um, Charlotte knows about this, and it just came up this morning. Um, <clears throat> we I got an email uh, from Tim Grethis of the foundation. And Tim uh, has been working with, uh, if you uh, all remember, the Southern Oregon Wildlife Crossing project we funded where they're looking to come up with several wildlife crossings in Southern Oregon around I-5 and that whole corridor, really um, worthwhile project. Well, he has, um, he was been, through the fact that we have our match program he used that to help entice a donor to that southern oregon wildlife crossing project it's twenty five thousand dollars and he he sent the email he says he wasn't sure if we were still doing that match program or not and i think we had some conversations but no uh decisions really were made on that so I wanted everyone to know that was out there. I think Charlotte I th had a good comment uh, to me about this previously, and that is this may be something we want to decide on at the in-person meeting, because we need to look at that program uh, in its entirety and see how we might want to proceed in the future. So it, I think, I'll get back to Tim, but that's not that far away before we, we would be able to sit down and have a, a, a rational discussion about well, what to do. For... Liza Jane, just to give you a little insight, maybe you knew this, but when the OCRF was established, they basically, the legislature said, we're going to give you a million dollars, but you got to raise a million dollars first of private funds which is a pretty daunting task. Uh, however, because Oregonians care as they do about the outdoor, outdoors, we were wildly successful. And we came up with a particular program of matching funds where we would match donations for specific projects. And that Trout Creek acquisition being one large one that we uh, got involved with. But th the outcome of that was in in our existence, which is now not quite two, it's about may, maybe one and a half bienniums, um, we've raised $1.5 million in private funds. And uh, that we matched that. So that took a chunk of our 30%. That, so that's taken some of our funding, but we were able to match, to, to raise that kind of money and to make the whole story even more complicated is the legislature at this beginning of this biennium, or no, it's like after we had already started, came up with some extra funding, gave us 
a bunch of money and said, oh, you don't have to match it anymore. <laughs> so we we had all geared up to do this on a regular basis. So we have a really nice program. So that's that's the kind of discussion we have to tee up for our in-person meeting. Uh, we have we did some things and have some projects going or programs going that we have to figure out how to utilize them most effectively. Mm -hmm. And so that's a discussion. I, I think for this particular issue, we'll just hold off. I'll let Tim know. We'll hold off till our in-person meeting and have a little more detailed discussion. But I want you all thinking about that, how you see the OCRF carrying forward with that particular project. And that that program of trying to raise private funds for these i mean it's powerful i mean it, it's it's powerful what we've been able to do with that so we'll have that discussion later mark it, yeah that sounds great carl you just might want to check with tim and make sure there's no timeline sensitivity to the donation needing to happen in 22 i, I recognize that I, I thought about just bringing it up here to you guys but we've done that again in the past that we were we were gunslinging and we would bring up things like this i think our gunslinging days are over charlotte's got us all reined in and so we will a little bit um, a little bit. but so, so we, i think we'll try to be a little more deliberate about this particular one but mark to your point i am planning on giving tim a call and just kind of chatting with him about the process it sounds like he has to put in an application and he wanted to mention the 30% potential match. So I can work with him to see what type of timelines that he has. So that as you guys have a purposeful and deliberate kind of thought process about how you want to continue, um, we aren't necessarily um, constraining his ability to apply, just making sure he's understanding that if he does, the guarantee's not there, if that makes sense. So I'll be able to work with him and um, have, I've had multiple conversations with him because this is actually, I believe, a second match to that specific project. I've worked with him for another one already. So. Sounds good. All right. I think with that, Carl, are, do you have any other updates? Because I think that might be a great transition into the November 29th meeting agenda. I'm done. Excellent. So I am going to share my screen. Um, my goal right now is kind of twofold. I kind of wanted to, first of all, talk a little bit about the logistics for the meeting. Um, and this is going to be high level. So obviously, we will be meeting on November 29th in person in Salem. So at the ODFW headquarters, our meeting location right now is going to be the commission room. So we'll have a we will have the commission room. However, I'm not gonna be setting it up like a formal commission meeting. It will be more in a uh, kind of a, I would say a horseshoe shaped panel so that you guys have a little less formality and you can look and work with each other a little better. Um, but that said, I think what I would like to do is kind of start high level with the timing of the meeting. What kind of, what is an appropriate length of meeting for you? I can fill 20 hours. So it is, do you want to be together for eight hours with a one hour working lunch? Would you like me to curtail that? So that's one of the things that I'd like you to kind of think about. We can kind of shrink it down a little bit. I wouldn't shrink it any more than six hours. We could do a smaller meeting, but we have enough to fill the whole meeting as you probably can see in the agenda. So that's kind of one high level thing I want you to think about. And then really I want to think have you think about kind of format for the meeting. And this might make a little bit more sense as we go through the agenda. I have you broken into four kind of chunks of work. And really the first one is setting the stage. That's gonna be your morning. And, you'll, and we'll talk through these agenda items together. Kind of where are we at? Where have we been? Then we're going to really move into where do we wanna go? That's kind of with a detailed conversation about monitoring and evaluation. Then we're going to kind of have a conversation after lunch. We do have an hour lunch, and I really would recommend we keep that, with, but we can discuss that because that's really your another point of time for you to discuss and to meet and kind of, I guess, honestly, get to know each other in person. But we'll also have quite a few ODFW um, employees coming down for lunch, so you'll have some time to socialize and meet some people then. So after lunch, we're going to be kind of doing a 
forward thinking kind of uh, how do we report out what we've done already? How do we continue to communicate? And then our last section was going to be kind of where are we going? And that is where we'll kind of talk about more priorities and future granting and kind of where, what do we want to be in five years, 10 years, more of a proactive thought. So maybe I'll pause there and see if that's jived anyone's thoughts. Um, and then we can go into the details. And I see Shristi, your hands up. So please feel free to go ahead. Thanks, Charlotte. And mine is more of a logistical request, if possible, because I joined this job last week and I have a board meeting now on that day. It's an hour and a half from 12.30 to 2 o'clock. So if at all it's possible to have the lunch break somewhere in that so I don't miss a whole hour and a half chunk, but miss like maybe half hour somewhere, that'd be really helpful. Mm, I can probably make that work. What? You said 12.30 to 1? 12.30 to 2 o'clock. So it's an hour and a half long meeting. Okay. And are you plan you're planning on being here in person, but remote to your board? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I think I can make that happen. Thank you. Maybe in that kind of similar vein, I know that Commissioner Lapart, you're planning and in remoting into the meeting still. Is that correct? That's correct. I'll be in Nevada. Uh, okay. Tonight, so. Are there um, any other planning or kind of overlap scheduling that I should be aware of right now? Or do I kind of have the rest of you corralled into one room for the day? All right. Hearing no others. Um, then, yeah, Shristi, I will definitely be able to do the 1230 to 130. I can shift around a couple different things that will mainly only have you miss a half hour. And if we shove the public comment right next to there, it really ends up only being about 20 minutes. That's perfect. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. And then hopefully you'll be able to not be on video and eat your lunch quietly wherever we can stick you. And I can actually <laughs> set you up another classroom so you can have a quiet space for that. Oh, thank you. I'd really appreciate that. Okay. Okay. Any other thoughts there before we kind of dive into the agenda? Not really. I think preferentially, I don't know what it is about eight o'clock meetings, but it's something with that eight o'clock hour that is tough to get going. So I would say, yeah, like an 830 start or something, if that works um, for most folks there. Um, just a preference. So we can totally do that. I already have the meeting ending at 4.30. So I guess a question for you guys is, do you want to just shift it, do 8.30 to five, since I believe I have all of you for dinner anyways. Okay, sweet. So that's an easy. Um, does anyone have any preference on number of breaks? Traditionally we do about every two hours. Obviously you can get up and move around. Okay. Are you thinking about having that maybe a designated bio break in between sessions, or is that something that also people can move freely about? I mean, technically, it's your meeting. You can tell me what to do, or Carl can <laughs> tell me what to do. Um, but yeah, my my goal was I was going to pretty much oops, every two hours just have a preset coffee break and snacks. Um, however, I mean, it's up to you guys. So as long as um, you just let me know. We can end kind of wherever it feels comfortable. And my goal is kind of uh, not to, other than one section, no section's more than an hour. And it has different kind of stopping points. So it's not like you're going to listen to someone jabber on for like way too long, like the old school lectures. So that sounds good to me. Okay, sweet. So let me kind of dive. In, I'm going to share my screen and I'm not going to go through this point by point because you obviously have this, but what I do want to know from you is what am I missing? What is going to be important for you to get out of this meeting and what do you want to make sure that we get covered? So the high level goals for 
Okay, hopefully you're seeing my screen now. The high level goals for this meeting from my perspective as staff is kind of twofold. I wanna give you all ample time to network and to connect with each other and to network and connect with ODFW staff members. You're gonna have the ability to meet with a lot of the people that are on our technical review team. You're gonna have the ability to meet with some of our administrators, our directors and um, program leads. So really uh, the agenda is meant to be fluid in the way that I give you time to do that socialization that's really needed for this board to build and continue. Also, I really wanna make sure that we have a clear kind of direction coming out of this meeting of where do we wanna to try to go? Where have we been and where are we going? We're not gonna have all of the answers there, but this will be a good opportunity to have more of a free thought about kind of what, what does the future for the OCRF look like and what do we wanna learn about our future for the OCRF? So hopefully that's kind of embedded into some of what that we've gone over. But I would maybe like to pause and see what other meeting objectives would you guys like to have out of this? Scarlett, for me, one of the things I saw on there was the monitoring and evaluation. I'm really happy that you had pulled that out. Um, and that we're going to have a, have a chance to really talk that over. And given, uh, I don't think it's specifically on the agenda, but the that whole discussion about the matching program and fundraising, maybe that's in here somewhere, but I couldn't uh, really find that, um, I think. Oh, sorry, Carl, I cut you off. No, go ahead, just, just, just it would be good to talk about those things. Yep, so I actually have future granting cycles. So that is agenda item 15, half hour, and that is specifically around that conversation. So I wanna really end with that conversation of how do we wanna do special projects? What is a special project? How do we really see ourselves evolving our grant program forward? So we might even, um, I'll take a look at this agenda. We might even want a little bit more time there because I'm hoping that's going to be a very open format discussion and really kind of after we learn and hear about all the different things that we're doing and we've done, that we kind of wrap our heads around that at the end. Okay, so I, I see that, and I I like that I like that way. We're going to have somewhat of an open ended conversation there before that, and then we can maybe get into some nitty gritty details. I like it. I like that. Okay. Great, and Marisha, I think I saw your hand up. I'm not sure if you've typed in the chat. Yes, yes, and so and 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 so I really and. I, I'm really looking forward to the opportunity to just having those open-ended conversations, but I also feel in order for us to be efficient, we probably might want to have some sort of like, maybe maybe specific, but maybe more of an outline outcomes as per each session in terms of data points that we want to capture from each um, that maybe will help us um, illuminate, you know, how we are going to actually articulate that mission moving forward into the future. And the other thing that I wanted to say is, so, one of the greater benefits that I see of us getting together in person is that, you know, we've, we've been so um, focused on very specific tasks as if we've been trying to structure the OCRF and trying to get through the proposals, making sure that we're um, sticking to our mandates, making sure that we're taking into, into consideration as many perspectives as those proposals are coming our way. But I also feel that we have access to this vested interest from both the geographical regions that we represent but also the organizations that we have access to and i think i'd love to be intentional about how is it that we can bring that to conversation so that we can be a little bit more um just intentional as how we move through what is it that we may mean for the future of uh, the the grantees and how does that move forward what we originally set out to be and trying to find intersection between conservation, recreation, uh, and do the things that we 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 know that we can do that we have been doing. How can we do them better, and how we can bring the most good out of the opportunity that has been given to us by the legisl legislature? So, um, I imagine that might be uh, as, as on the beginning of the day, as you as I see it on the agenda. 
but if there is some um, some other way in which we can make sure that we are uh, just bringing that part of ourselves that may not come up just as part of the structure of how we move through each session, that would be great. Mark yeah. Stern. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, the agenda looks good. Just a couple thoughts on one. I like that there's a legislative update on there that looks like Sarah's gonna give. And I think, I don't know if the governor's recommended budget will be available then. I know it's it's a little bit different this year because obviously we're gonna have a new governor, but it'd be really helpful to get an update on where the ODF and W and particular the OCRF budget request is, what, what form and shape it's in at that point would be helpful. And, and for me, it also ties pretty closely to the biennial report, because I think the biennial report will be really important in terms of being able to have that and share that during the upcoming legislative session as we try and position OCRF to receive the funding that we're hoping that it'll receive. So I guess it's a, a request or a question about getting an update on where in the governor's proposed budget the OCRF request is, was one thought. And yeah. then the other one, go ahead. go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, um, you're absolutely right. That is the um, goal of that session. And hopefully we'll have Debbie, um, our assistant director, also with us. She is kind of our legislative coordinator for the department. Uh, we won't know per se where that uh, policy option package is until we know who the governor is. Um, once we know who the governor is or have a very good sense we should know by then, um, then we'll have a good sense of kind of what the next steps are. Because dependent on who goes into the office will very drastically most likely change kind of what the process is going to be. I think we might know tomorrow. I would hope, but I don't say anything with American politics. Yeah. Uh, and then on a slightly different point, um, one thing that'd be really helpful for me, like a particular, I'm looking at the section on conservation and recreation priorities, a presentation from the staff. It'd be great if we could get that presentation a week ahead of time so that we'd have the opportunity to kind of digest it and be thinking about it. I think it'd be a more productive conversation for that one and maybe also the monitoring and evaluation one if, if we as the advisory committee had some materials in advance of the meeting to review and uh, consider so we can come into the meeting kind of more ready to talk about it. So just a thought there that I think would be helpful, at least to me. Yeah, absolutely. My goal right now is to get those materials to at least a week in advance. Um, and primarily what I have kind of teed up as pre-meeting materials is uh, you'll be getting agenda item three OSRF granting updates. That's going to be kind of the meat and potatoes numbers for funding and projects. You'll be getting the drought communications presentation. You'll be getting kind of my notes and thoughts and maybe some conversational questions for the monitoring and valuation. Uh, the conservation and recreation priorities, you will be getting something. And my goal is you will be getting a draft, full draft of the 2020 biannual report for initial red penning. So you should have a good chunk of materials prior to that meeting. That sounds that sounds great. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Lovehart. Yeah, Charlotte. Do you know if uh, Director Melcher would be available that morning to welcome everybody? Have you checked into that? I have. So I have claimed some time on his calendar. Um, I'm going to be checking in with him this week, so he should be available. And if nothing else, he is going to be, unless his calendar is changed, joining us for lunch as well. Great. So Thank you. Yeah, and yeah. I'm hoping to have actually all of our WG directors with us for lunch in most of our administrators, if I can convince them with some pizza. Good. Tell them free lunch. Yeah, they'll, they'll come. Yeah. <laughs> Christy? Thanks, Carl. Um, this might have been something, Charlotte, you might have touched upon and I missed, but I was wondering, uh, for the piece that's talking about ODFNW conservation and recreation priorities, is that also the section where you envision we bring up some of the topics we have sort of put a pin on in the past about like drought package funding and how are we going to prioritize certain projects um, or are we going to have a specific strategy and how we use that funding like that kind of conversation that we had put on the 
sideboard for a second. Um, do you envision that come up there or in another section? Um, I'm going to say yes and. So I really think that conversation is going to flow from agenda item 14, which is the one the conservation recreation priorities into agenda item 15, which is the future granting, because I think those two are very well tied together kind of figuring out where do we want to have those really important focal areas, then how do we adjust them? Thank you. Charlie, so I understand this with the um, item 14. So how much of that is presentation? And how much of that is discussion? My goal right now is 50-50. So I'm thinking that no more than 30 minutes of presentation, and that is going to be on the longer end. I really want kind of just the highlights of what is Habitat doing? What do we need? What is wildlife doing? What do we need? What are some of these focal things that OCRF is interested in and wants to learn more about and then go into the discussion? But we can adjust this in any way that you guys want because we don't want death by PowerPoint. We do want to give you information. Yeah, I, I, so our time real estate is so precious. The, I think the most valuable thing is for us to have a, a discussion and to, and to have the committee members talk about priorities and what we really want to do and not necessarily get a lot of presentation. I think I would prefer, as Mark had pointed out, if you could get the staff... <laughs> To, to write up what they're going to present and send that to us beforehand rather than present it to us then and and have way more time to talk about it than to present it. And, and that goes, again, because our real estate is so uh, precious, you have the agenda item six, which is for 30 minutes, it's an update on the drought and communications presentation. While I think it's important for us to hear about the things we funded, this is too precious a time, in my opinion, to spend 30 minutes getting a presentation. I, I'd, I'd just as soon have a written update on what they've done and use that 30 minutes for us to talk. Um, so the, I, that's just a, again, we're going to run out of time. We're not going to be able to, as it is, we, I can tell just even looking, everybody here has got things they want to say and, and I want them to be able to say it and, and we have to have the time to do it. So I, I would really look to pare down any presentation that we're going to get and convert that into some, as Mark had thought about is to give us that information beforehand and even maybe be there for a question you know like for the the drought communications a, a five minute presentation and we can ask them questions uh that's more where i'd like to see us spend our time and i think we can definitely do that if that is a format that everyone feels would be more productive which I can definitely see it would be, then maybe the ask for these groups would be to provide, as you said, Carl, some sort of written update, either prepared, prepared slides and or just a written couple pages. And then maybe what we would ask them to do is do a quick summary slide where they can kind of refresh everyone's memory for like a minute or two before the OCRF goes into a discussion where with them present. And, and, be, and be able to, to answer questions, you know, like, like, I don't know how many people you're planning on staff people you're having to present, but, uh, you know, just to get some priorities, get it lined out. We've already had a chance to think about them. We can ask specific questions to the staff person and that informs the conversation going forward. I think that's a better, uh, use of time potentially. I mean, I, again, I think we're going to we're going to eat up that hour to talk about things at the end of the day really fast and and feel like we didn't get where we wanted to be it's a lot to cram into a single meeting um i actually had more things i would have liked to cover so i think next year i might try to steal a little more of your time but 
as you said, Carl, I think that this is a meeting really to have those discussions and that conversation. We're very productive over Zoom, but I think there's something to be said about being together in a room. I'm 100% so. with you. And that, uh, just to elaborate on that a bit more, having the staff involved, I think, is really, really important. And I'm not sure, I, in, in terms of the scheduling, I know that you've worked hard to get a really nice dinner for us, and the dinner's going to be great. But is there, uh, are we having a reception? Are we having a period of time? I mean, people want to get out of the meeting, go take care of some business. But then if, if say, before the dinner or, say, right after this, before the staff maybe goes home or where we could spend 30 or 40 minutes, preferably with cocktails, uh, just talking to each other and, and in a very unformatted forum where we can meet the people that we've been seeing on Zoom that have been doing the reviews for us, not necessarily even talk about any specific thing, but just shake their hand and look them in the eye and all that stuff. Uh, if there's a way to have kind of an informal uh, cocktail hour or something after work hours and after we're done, it invites whoever staff wants to come. So, um... Funny you said that. Uh, I've actually, how do I phrase this? Yes, we can totally make that happen. Um, it does not interfere with dinner plans at all. I, that has not been set in stone, so we can adjust that. I do not know the formality of the logistics of reception, but I have an idea of how we would do that. My guess is that if you would want adult beverages, um, you would need to have it off site because obviously we're a state building, but I have a couple of ideas. So maybe what I am hearing here is that that kind of networking would be beneficial for all of you. And something that I've actually heard from a couple of the staff that they would like. So we will, I will plan on figuring that out and emailing that to you guys. And maybe what we would do is plan on a, maybe a five to, a 4.30 to 5.30 happy hour get together at one of the local places. And then we can um, push dinner a little bit later or however you would wanna do that. And there's no need to have a formal dinner. You can also, we can shift that very, very easily to just doing a happy hour locally um, if that's a format you'd prefer. I think it'll be, I think it, personally, I think it'd be very nice to have a dinner. We're all together and breaking yeah. bread. And but then it'll make that better if we've already kind of been able to talk to each other and meet staff and all of that in a more informal setting because it's hard to talk to everybody at dinner. You can talk mm -hmm. to who's ever sitting next to you, and this way, I I just think that would be fun. And and the the out the cocktail thing is not critical. If it's better to have it at at the ODF and W place make it more convenient for people. That's just fine. We just have some refreshments and, and, and just get people together. That, that that's way more important than moving necessarily to another site just so that we could have, have drinks. So okay. uh, just some, some way to make this um, an informal get together and then we can have dinner. Marette has asked if spouses are included in the dinner plans. Yes, absolutely. So that might be a good um, time for me to kind of transition into some of your travel logistics and answer Marette's questions. Um, are there any other high level questions about or thoughts about the agenda? I would very much welcome any sort of red pens and additional comments by email or anything like that as you guys continue to digest that and if there's any sort of specific things you would want. But I'm wondering due to time and the current question if we should transition a little bit. How's everybody feeling just about the direction that it's not a huge change in direction that we're going, but just a little bit of a change. Is that is everyone I okay? think it's great. Yeah. I love I like the opportunity for more discussion versus being talked out. And I know it's always a balance of that in all these meetings. So I appreciate those inputs. Thank you. All right. Great. And yeah, and I feel it's very much a refinement. So I 
think this is great. Uh, to Marit's question about spouses included in dinner plans. So travel logistics are that um, for this meeting, ODFW through the OCRF funds will be paying for your uh, ground transportation, i.e. your gas and use of your personal vehicle to drive you, and also for your hotel room. So if you have a spouse or somebody else coming with you to that to the meeting, that is perfectly fine. It does not change the cost of your hotel room. If for some reason you would need additional um, kind of concessions or um, considerations for your hotel room that cost extra because you bring an additional person, those would be any sort of things you would have to pay for out of pocket. Um, an example is sometimes if you would want a king bed instead of a queen bed, that is an additional cost. You would pay the difference of that reservation. Or if you were bringing a small child and you needed a crib, obviously that's not something the department would pay for, but we would have no problem if you paid the difference in the cost. Um, similarly, for dinner plans and spouses, spouses are more than welcome to be coming to dinner. Um, I actually am cross my fingers planning and bringing my own. Um, so you guys will be responsible for paying the difference of the cost, i.e. just the cost of their meal. Um, and what you can do is just arrange with me, just let me know who you'll be bringing, and they, you would be paying just a separate tab for the meal. Your meals would be paid for. So I will be having a main tab for dinner um, that all the advisory members would be covered under. Uh, we do not pay for adult beverages. Um, soft drinks and things like that are paid for your meal. And whatever the cost of having the additional person, which I believe right now with the venue I have priced out, it's $29 for a three course meal. Um, you would just arrange with your waiter at that time, as long as they have a head count, just to pay that. In addition to any sort of other beverages that you would want for the meal, if that makes sense. And they're more than welcome to, we have ample space. So I guess out of curiosity, how many, and you can um, let me know by email, do you guys have a sense of um, how many of you might be bringing a plus one to the dinner? Okay. Well, as I said, just let me know if you do, they're more than welcome to come. Um, Otherwise, kind of next steps for that, hopefully at this point, all of you have arranged your hotel room with Sarah's, uh, Sapinosa. Um, if you have not emailed me immediately, just to make sure, but I believe I have uh, travel forms from all of you, except for you, Liza Jane, will get you a travel form. Um, but we do have your hotel arranged. I did that kind of preemptively, fingers crossed that we would get you fully on the board. Um, Thank you. Great. Uh, otherwise, uh, the typical kind of process for that is um, you will have your breakfast if you're spending the night before the meeting um, at the hotel, you'll come for the meeting. I will be doing a lunch at the meeting, so there'll be no expense for you then. Um, right now, we are still figuring out what's going to be for lunch. I'll send you an email probably later this week. We've narrowed it down to either sandwiches or make your own pizzas. Um, so that will kind of be fun. You can let me know if you have any sort of specific eating um, considerations. Uh, specifically kind of a gluten is one thing we're looking at because obviously it's a little bit of a uh, wheat heavy choices for lunch at this point, but we can adjust that as needed. Um, then we will have dinner, which will be paid for directly. You will not have a cost associated with that. And those that are spending the night, which I think is everyone but one of you, you'll have breakfast paid for the next day. Depending on how far you are traveling, you will most likely have, and a couple of you are traveling quite a distance, you'll most likely have the fringe meals, which is basically the lunch, the day you travel and lunch the following day that you travel also paid, and that will be per diem. So you'll be requesting those funds back. Typically, if you're driving more than about two and a half, three hours, depending on when you leave, um, that is normally covered for you. And that will be a reimbursement along with your gas and your mileage for your vehicle. So pretty standard. Um, are there any sort of thoughts or questions about kind of meeting logistics uh, or anything like that? Thank you for all your work on that, Charlotte. It's a lot of work to coordinate. Appreciate it. <laughs> well, um, it's a work in progress, but I think it's coming together. And as I said, I look forward to having some 
additional comments and thoughts from you guys on the agenda. So please feel free to kind of tell me, change times, anything that you want, whatever will make your time um, good. And remember, I am gonna email you. Um, we will be having lots of snacks and beverages. So if there's anything that's kind of like your go-to, please have at a meeting, you're welcome to request. Uh, Twizzlers, I mean, we have a very healthy budget. So if there's something that you guys really like, um, I don't want hangry, so we can make it work. It's a long day. All right, so I think with that, we are a little behind budget, but or behind time, but we're plenty of time left. Maybe, Carl, with your permission, maybe we'll end this conversation about the planning, jump to agenda item five, public comment, to be respectful of the public's time, and then we're going to go back to agenda item four as part of our wrap up. That sounds great. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, we still have a few members of the public. So I think at this time, I will formally open public comment. It's 210. And I would ask that any members of the public that would like to either turn on their camera or type a chat or uh, use any sort of audio, um, please feel free just to speak up if you have something you would like the board to hear. Oh, and I see Tyler, so please go ahead. Hey all, uh, thanks for the opportunity to comment here. I just wanted to let you all know about uh, the project that you funded uh, for OHA a couple of rounds ago is the Restoring Hope and Habitat project. We're two weeks away, it's been a heck of a lot of work, but uh, we're set to get 14,000 sage and bitterbrush plants in the ground and uh, couldn't be more excited. We have about hundred volunteers signed up. Um, we have multiple organizations involved. And that's kind of the, the segue there that I wanted to, to explain here is that we really support the ongoing match program that you guys offer or have offered in the past. And the reason for that is that we believe it's a great way to get more partners involved in these projects. Um, and this Hope and Habitat project is, I think, a great example of that because we were able to reach out to Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. They were saying, yeah, let's leverage some funds and we can make this project bigger. Um, and this Hope and Habitat project has just grown exponentially. And um, we want to continue, I think, to, on that path to the best of our abilities. If the, the powers that be here um, let us continue the match program, I think it's really important for collaboration with other groups. I mean, we have 11 project partners now on Hope and Habitat, and uh, we look forward to, to doing that again in the future. So I want to say thank you again for the funding that uh, was the impetus for this, this Hope and Habitat project to uh, restore some uh, wildfire <laughs> yeah, restoration projects. So um, thanks for the opportunity to comment here and I can answer any questions, of course, if you have them. Tyler, your, your comments couldn't be more timely and appreciated um, because we're gonna make some decisions about that grant, the matching program and, and having feedback like that, what you just gave us, I mean, that's, it's all, it it's, helps us uh, help plot the course forward. It's also really gratifying to hear what you ha just had to say. It's just, you know, the, I think we're, we're making some good things happen and we appreciate you bringing us that. So thank you very much for all your comments. Thank you. Hey. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us and for sharing that. Um, I've just been reading the chats. It looks like we have no more public comments. So I might close public comment officially right now since we have no other statements. And I think I'd like to spend the last 10 minutes before we do a quick wrap up, just going over the uh, current round of projects that um, we are working with and kind of where are we at with the technical reviews, get a quick gut check with you guys of how you are all doing, and then kind of go from there. So first things first, um, we have 64 projects and these projects are much heavier than they have been in the past. We've kind of asked a couple of new additional questions in our applications and our applicants went wild giving us information. It was really great to see um, how much they wanted their space to give more details. That said, more details is harder for us in a certain sense to kind of 
go through all these applications and to learn more about them. So of those 64 applications, they are all within technical uh, review right now. And just as a reminder, um, ODFW staff and also uh, Kaylin are reviewing all of these projects. We have two um, technical review staff per project and they are reading over the projects and really just giving comments and feedback. So you will be getting those comments and feedback next week. And our staff are really giving some great feedback. You will have quite a bit of comments for each project to help weigh into your scoring. Um, and then similar as last time, uh, each project is going to be reviewed by at least two of you um, on the OSTRF Advisory Board. And you'll have those technical review comments next week that hopefully will weigh into kind of um, what you are reviewing right now. So maybe I'll pause there. So technical reviews are on track. Let me see, how are you guys feeling? Um, are you good with where you're at? Uh, Marit, I see your hands up. I had another question on conflict of interest. So mm -hmm. I gave it a quick look um, when you sent out that list, but there were a couple of people I missed that I ended up with looking at their projects. People that were I partnered with over significant partnership projects when I was still working. And I mean, I just know a lot about their operations and I guess that's good. Um, what do you, you know, what are you looking for again for a conflict of interest? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, so really the state defines conflict of interest uh, kind of the twofold. There's obviously the legitimate, very clear cut conflict of interest. That is, are you financially or in a position of gaining something from that? Um, there's also conflict of interest in a power sense. Like, are you in a position of power over somebody? that is either you sit on their board, you write their paychecks, you hold their other funding. Um, so that is usually very clear cut. Everyone on this board can get a very quick sense. That said, there's also perceived conflict of interest. And that's really where I believe you're talking about Moret of just that gut check. Um, this is a very small state. And I think we've all worked together with almost all of these applicants at some stage. So I would say use your judgment. If you've worked with them in a past in a professional capacity and you do not currently hold those ties with them, you should be perfectly fine because that really puts you more into a technical review standpoint of, you know the applicant, you know their work, you've worked with them, but you're not currently working with them. Obviously, if there was a professional or personal malice, not that I'm applying there was any, but if there's a reason someone would say you wouldn't be fair, for any certain reason, then obviously you need to remove yourself from that regardless of that professional capacity has been severed. Also, there's a consideration of personal capacity. Um, the example I like to give is if someone's literally at your dinner table every other week because you're very, very friendly with them, definitely, although you might not be in a position of financial or professional power, that is still a conflict of interest. Um, so, we can talk offline, but most of the time I would say that that really just falls into the fact that you're an excellent reviewer and you just know your topic, not that it's truly a conflict of interest, but your gut would really be the one to help kind of guide that. We can talk through that. The state's pretty silent when it says perceived. Okay, that helps That helps a lot. And in the past, I've taken myself off of projects where I actively counseled somebody. So, you know, that was a clear place to not be involved. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if you're actively helping to develop the project, then you do have obviously kind of an intellectual interest in it past just you want to see it succeed. Um, With that being said, I think all of us will get, people will have questions for you about the proposal, like certain priorities. I don't think that's necessarily going to present a conflict of interest. I mean, I've had applicants want clarification about certain things i don't feel i feel we should be comfortable given that as long as you you know there's a certain line that you don't want to step over but just having a chat with them about their project is not necessarily a conflict of interest exactly so consultation is more of what i would refer to that as so a consultation of what are the interests of the board is perfectly fine if you sat down and you literally red penned their application to help them get a better description of some of their stuff, um, that would be a conflict of interest for the board. And for transparency's sake, I worked with a lot of our applicants as the coordinator 
read through things and offered review, knowing that I do not actually grade or influence your scores past making sure you assign them and hand them in to me. So that would be more of an issue would be if you like read their application prior to submission beginning to end and really pointed out their flaws. That would be a position I wouldn't want you guys to be in. And if you were there, which is fine, then you would have to take yourself off that project. So how are your reviews going? Please tell me you've opened them. Some of you? I'll, I'll be the first honest one. I have opened them and, and gl glassed through them. I have not gotten extensively into those yet. Okay. Yeah, but I will. <laughs> That's not a problem. I do want to just make sure that you all are all very aware they are larger than normal and they are a little bit of a hodgepodge. Our, remember, our online system crashed. So two thirds of them I had to manually edit and attach to the end. So it is not gonna be quite as easy as it has been in the past, but all of your information is there. So just, although I am a last minute person, um, please don't be like me. You do kind of wanna at least know what you're getting into. All right, so I would say- well, Charlotte, I will, so, uh... I, I'm not sure I got a list of projects to review. Um, I, I got a list of all the projects. So I will talk to you again. Um, you should have very easily, if you got a list of the, all the projects, you should have had your list of which projects to review. That was in an email I sent out about two and a half weeks ago. Huh. Okay. Well, I may have missed it. I've been I've been kind of waiting for my list of projects <laughs> i'll um, go back and look at it why don't you you could stay online after this i will make sure that you are redirected to where you are can i ask everyone else got that email right so uh carl i think it was not a list of projects it was a link to the folder that your projects are in so uh, it was a link it was a link to the google drive and when you clicked on that link uh you saw the folder for each of us yep. and uh then you open that folder and that's where the the projects are as well as your scoring sheet. what was does anyone recall the date of that uh email it's been at least i don't know well charlotte probably knows it's been more than a week i, I have it right now it was on october 19th and i can forward this to you right now carl yeah do that because uh Oh, here it is. <laughs> Somehow I just didn't even open it. Okay. Okay. Oh, well, you still have plenty of time. That is good that I am checking in. Um, yeah. But the rest of you have that, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I would say that's kind of all the updates that I have. Obviously, uh, you will have some time on November 29th to kind of check in with me again. Um, but we're going to be if in kind of a sh quick turnaround after that. So you guys are planning on doing your formal voting on of these projects on December 5th. So you'll have, and then once next week, I'll be starting to schedule those one-on-one -on -one or group conversations with our technical review staff. Once you get your reviews from the staff on November 14th, you'll have them written. That will give you an opportunity that week to kind of read through those, see if you have any specific questions on a project, and then I will start kind of scheduling those consultations, either the week of the 21st, or if we have availability, I might kind of stick a couple of those um, opportunities just to check in with the staff um, during your in-person meeting. Remember, those are not an opportunity for you to make a decision. It is for you just to clarify, hey, I wasn't sure what your question was. Have you thought of this? What are your thoughts on that? Just kind of more of a conversation about the projects. Um, all formal decisions will obviously be made public on December 5th during our um, OCRF meeting. And really these kind of um, 
hopefully these staff meetings will go much, much more smoother. That's why we actually changed our format of the staff review this time. They're now actually giving written comments versus numbers. So that will really, I think, alleviate a lot of those kind of questions we had before of what is a three? Why was it a three? Now they actually are giving comments and they've given very detailed comments. So I think that will help. Are there any other questions, thoughts, concerns past mine that Carl did not have his projects yet? <laughs> I got it now. <laughs> oh, all right. Um, maybe with that, Carl, I would love to pass the meeting back to you for wrap up and next steps. Great. Well, uh, we got a couple of hands up. Uh, I'm not sure oh. who was first. Marat? Marat, I did see your hand up. Did you mean to have it up or was that from before? Sorry, that was just a leftover, but um, thank you for all your work, Charlotte. That was really handy. And I like the new format, having um, a folder with all my stuff in it so I don't have to go searching for numbers. It really makes it a lot easier. So thank you for that change. Yeah, absolutely. Mark Lavon? Well, um, Carl, I know we don't give a gold star award, but um, I think we had to give a gold star award to Mauricio because if, if I'm not correct, it's about 1130 at night in Amsterdam. Right now. <laughs> and uh, if, if I was him, I'd be sound asleep, but uh, he deserves a gold star for being up at 1130 at night participating in this meeting. Today. I agree. Yeah, Mauricio, thank you so much. Your, your input is always so valued and, and for you to take the time to do this while you're in Amsterdam, we really appreciate it. It's great. It's a privilege to be here with all of you. And yes, very much looking forward to the 29th. Likewise, likewise. Well, anything else? Because I don't think I have anything else. And if not, then um, Charlotte, I don't have to get with you afterwards because I found my email and we can move on. So thank you all so much for a, another great meeting. And again, welcome to Liza Jane. Uh, we look forward to working with you. It's gonna be great having you on board. And um, so thank you all for attending and we'll see you all quite soon in person. I can't wait. Great. Yeah, thank you. thank you. And please make sure you keep an eye out for I am going to be sending one last logistics email mainly about food preferences. So just let me know if there's any sort of wants, wishes, or please, I don't want that in sight because of X, Y, and Z, because all of the above is fine. Great. Thank you all. Great. Great. Bye -bye. Thank you. And Mark, I just sent you a chat. Did you see that? Oh, you are muted. Yes, I did see that. Thank you. Let me circle up with my wife and see. I, I sort of figured I'd just drive home and not bother with a hotel overnight. But do you think people are going to convene in the morning or people just disperse in the morning? Um, I have a feeling that some will convene in the morning. Um, it would be your yeah. discretion. Um, I think Carl is planning on making a very large social event of it. So I think he's going to enjoy kind of catching up with people. Um, yeah. And we have the funds, so definitely don't. Yeah, think okay. There's a problem with that. I have eleven thousand dollars. Let me let me circle back to you. Labhart's calling me right now, so okay. I'm gonna. Take no it. problem. Alrighty. Thanks. Bye. Hey, Mark.